After President Biden took a very public tumble, Kimberly Guilfoyle and Sarah Palin called Joe Biden's 2024 presidential run elder abuse. So first, I want to get your reaction to Biden's fall and just how awful and really it was painful to watch and to see all this is quite sad. Yes, that's what I was going to say is it's painful to watch and yet Kimberly so indicative of so many things that are so wrong with this whole scenario. I consider it elder abuse that he has family members, his wife shoving him out there physically, literally telling him to get out there and cognitively and physically he can't do the job and it's just really sad to watch. The news is so predictable that as soon as things happen you already know what each network is going to say or how they're going to spin or present a story. So apart from getting the facts however or wherever you get them from you really have to be discerning as far as where you get your commentary from. They shoving Biden back out there to run again. So yeah Joe Biden fell down and that is unfortunate. Joe Biden is an older man. We know that. I don't think there's a single American who doesn't know that. Joe Biden knows that. Joe Biden, whether or not you believe he's suffering from dementia, is running for a second term in office by his own volition. If he wants out, he doesn't have to run. And I know that the argument against that statement will be that he's somehow being pressured or blackmailed or guilted by members of his party to stay in the race, or that his mind is so far gone that he doesn't even know what's going on or that he's running at all. But we don't know that for sure, so we should not adopt that possibility as fact. Why would an 82-year-old Joe Biden be the right person for the most important job in the world? Because I have acquired a hell of a lot of wisdom. I know more than the vast majority of people. I'm more experienced than anybody's ever run for the office. And I think I've proven myself to be honorable as well as also effective. That said, I don't know a whole lot of Democrats who are in denial of the fact that Joe Biden is old. You don't need to keep reminding us. Republicans seem to be under the impression that Democratic voters don't think Biden's age is a big deal at all. I know a lot of Democratic voters, myself included, who would much rather have a more vital and dynamic candidate for president. By the way, Trump isn't that much younger than Biden. The gerontocracy that governs our nation is less than ideal. Just look at our Senate. It's a problem that with time will hopefully rectify itself, but for now we kind of have to work with what we're given. And I know that that statement won't be popular with progressives, and I know that it sounds a little defeatist. It kind of feels defeatist just to say it, and honestly, it is defeatist. While I would love to see credible challengers for the Democratic nomination this election cycle, we already know that we're not going to. Now, that might be because the DNC won't allow challengers to Biden, which is a problem on its own, but not one that I personally foresee getting resolved within the next year. Also, historically speaking, the incumbent is overwhelmingly likely to win a re-election campaign. So much of playing politics is pattern recognition, and while it's good to disrupt systems when they're not working, it's also strategically advantageous to understand how difficult, time-consuming, and costly it is to disrupt those systems. If the Democrats want to beat the Republicans in 2024, their best bet is probably Joe Biden. And look, I'm not happy about it either, but the Democrats have a huge opportunity right now to start building that presidential bench for 2028. The Democrats have a lot of strong people on their side, representatives, senators, governors, whoever, many of whom could potentially be worthy candidates in a few years. But Democrats tend to be hypercritical of their presidential candidates, much more so than the Republicans, to the point that we expect perfection and are incredibly intolerant of imperfection. That's not going to bode well in the future, and I think it's important to remember that while the president is obviously an important figure, not just in our country but around the world, the president isn't all of government. The president is also a human being, unless we have AIs running in 2028, so we have to be okay with some skeletons in the closet or some social oddities. Yeah, we can aspire for greatness, but just think back to the 2020 primary. There were so many candidates who were all miles better than anyone the Republicans had to offer, but we still found reasons to discount and entirely dismiss anyone who wasn't Bernie Sanders. And let's be real, they were never going to let us have Bernie Sanders. And that's also a problem that needs fixing.
And I know this feels luxury, and for that, I'm sorry. There's a lot of feelings that surround this topic, but as I know that I've said before, we have a two-party system, and in a system like the one that we've got, it's one or the other. And there's little room for innovation and idealism when one of those two choices is entirely unacceptable. You're in a much more risk-averse position when your choices are either Joe Biden or Donald Trump. The two-party system itself is a problem that needs fixing, but again, it's not likely going to be fixed or changed between now and 2024. All of that said, of course, anything can happen. I'm not trying to be prophetic over here. In fact, we talked about patterns earlier. We have seen a sitting president lose his re-election bid because a similar moment of weakness was caught on camera, and it didn't go well for that guy. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok.